figured out at about 15 years of age that countries can die, and we're not guaranteed that we're going to succeed. Mr. Speaker, on this historic day, the House of Representatives opens its proceedings for the first time to televised coverage. From this day forward, every member of this body must ask himself or herself how many Americans are listening to the debates which are made. I came to Capitol Hill in January of 1979. That March, the Cable Satellite Public Affairs Network, known as C-SPAN, set up its first cameras to broadcast from the floor of the House of Representatives. It's also when Bob Walker and I really joined forces. I appreciate very much this chance. Thank you. Newt was ahead of his time, I think, in many ways. Um, uh, he recognized the value of, of reaching around the media. They took advantage of the special order process where it allowed them to speak to the country on what, how they, how they felt about these issues or how they felt about uh, how the Democrats were approaching these issues. And, and we, we made it into uh, a, a kind of, of debate uh, without really debating each other by sticking out to our point. And we began to capture an audience and we figured out pretty soon that there were people watching and there were people watching who were activists on both sides uh, of the uh, uh, political spectrum. I think among the establishment staff, Walker and I were both out there on the fringes and we were very marginal people doing weird things. Uh, and that we somehow thought that giving speeches on the floor mattered. Republicans just dominated special orders for days and weeks and months on end until it, until it so inflamed uh, you know, Tip O'Neill that he moved the cameras. Uh, Tip O'Neill uh, decided uh, to pull back the cameras and show that I was speaking to an empty chamber. Now, that was against the rules. The rules said that uh, you had to focus the cameras on only the person speaking. And that was done in the early days of C-SPAN to make certain that the cameras didn't pan the floor and catch people sleeping or otherwise not paying attention on the House floor. What he decided to change was to, to demonstrate that they were talking to no one because the chamber was empty except for the speaker. But in reality, it has cost the taxpayers of this country tens of thousands of dollars, if not hundreds of thousands. What in fact they were doing was talking to America to the people who might be tuned into C-SPAN. I had a um, aide come running down and put a little a paper in front of me saying, the cameras have pulled back and show you're speaking to an empty chamber. I said to the people watching that I understand that this has happened and what you need to understand is there may not be anybody in the chamber listening to me, but a lot of you out across the country are listening uh, to me and, uh, and just, just proceeded forward. Uh, but um, I, I do want to take a note of something that's uh, evidently happening right now which um, is uh, a, uh, a change of, of procedure here. It is my understanding that as I deliver this special order this evening, uh, the cameras are panning this chamber, demonstrating uh, that there is no one here in the chamber to listen to these remarks. It is one more example of how uh, uh, this body is run, uh, the kind of arrogance of power that uh, the members are uh, uh, given that kind of, uh, uh, of uh, change with absolutely no warning. I have to feel that perhaps uh, he, this body is getting worried that some of the things that are being said in this chamber in these special orders are in fact influencing people out across the country to think that this body is something less uh, than uh, uh, what the American people think it ought to be.